What's that? Another reason why Cyclops is badass? Well, I could just point you to the first episode of X-Men 97, but since this is poorly explained comics, the man has game. Arguably so much game, it's a little bit of a problem. But, if you ignore some missteps here and there, most of which I'd attribute more to a writer decision than a character one, the biggest problem is for the reader. Because it's hard to keep track of how many already adult kids he has running around. Although Cyclops' most notable and enduring love interest is Jean Grey, they're currently married, all their kids are from different realities. Which I usually try not to get into, but since they're both running around in the main Marvel 616 timeline, I think I can make an exception. Nate Grey, also known as X-Man, hails from the reality known as Age of Apocalypse where an assassination attempt on Magneto went horribly wrong, killed Charles Xavier instead, and led to Apocalypse ruling the world. Nate's not the only notable character who made it over to 616 from that reality, though, as Dark Beast, Beast's equivalent, naturally, also found his way over, as did a guy named Holocaust, but he's not as important. Rachel Summers, aka Prestige, comes from the Days of Future Past timeline, where mutants are hunted down by a Sentinel-backed government only for the Sentinels to turn on all humans in an effort to eradicate mutants at the source, because, after all... What are Marvel's mutants but humans with one genetic differentiation? You may have noticed a theme here, and yes, most alternate X-Men futures are real downers, thank you for asking. Both Nate and Rachel have incredible psychic abilities that allow them to do a whole host of other things, as Nate can manipulate energy and matter and basically do whatever the hell he wants, and Rachel can use her psychic powers to manipulate and travel through time, space, and alternate dimensions. In the comics, she's actually the one who makes averting the Days of Future Past timeline possible, since she's the one who sends Kate Pride, rather than Wolverine, as moviegoers may be familiar with, back in time to prevent the Sentinel takeover. But Cyclops' most notable offspring is probably Nathaniel Summers, better known as Cable. Although he was born in the main timeline, Cable was flung in a yet another post-apocalyptic alternate future as a mere baby, to be saved from the techno-organic virus that he'd been infected with by Apocalypse. He then came back to the past twice, once as a teenager and once as an adult, with both even existing in the present simultaneously and God damn it, I hate time travel so much! Anyways, Cable has two kids of his own, which means Cyclops is officially a granddad. But since his son Genesis has been dead since the mid-90s, the only one that really matters, as far as I'm concerned at least, is Hope, his adopted daughter. The first new mutant born after Scarlet Witch had an editorial-induced breakdown and removed most people's ex-genes, Hope was sent to the future, sound familiar, where Cable looked after her until she too came back and fixed the No More Mutants issue. She's also still hanging around in the present. Oh yeah, did I not mention that Cable's mom isn't Jean? Because that's probably important. She's actually Madeline Pryor, a clone of Jean created by Mr. Sinister, who theorized that a Summer's Grey baby would be phenomenally powerful, which, although immensely creepy, was by all accounts correct. Scott married her while Jean was dead because of the whole Dark Phoenix thing, but in one of those instances I choose to blame the writers for, that fell apart and Cyclops straight up walked out on his wife and kid once he found out Jean was alive, because really the Venn diagram between mainstream superhero comics and soap operas is... Pretty dang close to a circle. Oh, and Cable has his own evil clone from the future. He's called Strife. I don't know much about him, except that he's apparently very bad news. Man, it's this really got off Cyclops a while back, huh? Oh, I'm sure I'll circle back around to him eventually, maybe talk about that time-displaced younger version more or something similar. But for now, we're moving on to a different X-Men subject for next week, which... Hmm. Let's see how poorly I can explain Storm. That ought to be fun.